I got oh, one. He's still talking. I Which got ones? one. I got one. Though. These tripods? Yeah. I strapped mine to like my headrest on the passenger side so I can like live stream and talk to people. Yeah, I didn't bring it with me because at first I was like, I don't want to carry it. I was just carrying my pack. I can't imagine. Like, well, I, for the first 620 miles. I was just carrying, the beginning here. I was carrying my pack, which was 40 pounds. That's crazy. The main issue with that was carrying enough water. It's sticky, but it's not just cooked food. Cool. You don't have to try it, but... No, uh, I, I like trying new food. This is cool. This is like um, what you a raspberry kiwi and banana. Maybe not just smash it up. Mm -hmm. Smash it up. Cook it down until it's like a thick paste. Then spread it on this, and since I don't have a dehydrator, this yeah. microwave is a lot. This is rice with just... moisture. Doesn't that kill everything? <laughs> and still got fiber. It's still got sugar. I mean, the raisins, they're pretty dead, but... I haven't tried them yet. <laughs> I'll try them first, and then... Uh, uh, if you're feeling adventurous, you can try no, them No, raisins are tough. They take forever to dry. They do. Mine got burnt because I also have a This was a really like. What's this? Beef jerky. That's. Oh, like How'd you make this? And my friends make this one. Gotta give my shout out to Steph and Jake, my two buddies. I have real grapes. I you, think, yeah. You stick I think with your I'll, real grapes. I'll eat my real These grapes. are kind of like um, caramel flavored charcoal. So, not delicious. But, uh,. I'm, I'm gonna eat them out of obligation. Cause I need my breakfast. Beef jerky is delicious. Beef jerky is the best part, and it's the thing I didn't make. So. You know, on this on this journey, mm. this is what I'm eating: like beef jerky, dried fruit, and nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And burgers. You like and burgers? When I'm I was gonna in, say the Oregon Trail. This is uh, I don't know if they have burgers on the Oregon Trail. That's um, a, when I'm in town and stuff. I get big burgers. Mm -hmm. So tell me, Yapong, what the heck are you doing? I'm walking across the U.S. Why? So there were a lot of reasons leading up to it. And um, it came kind of sudden. Mm. It came three weeks before I left. I'm a Whoa. bad planner. I'm a really bad planner. And some people take a year to plan. <laughs> a year almost. Yeah. I left, like, what, what's next Friday? I'm three gonna... weeks before I left, this idea came. I felt like I needed to take major action in my life. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you how old I was? What do you think? Let's see, you lived in Seattle for 20 years. So either you moved there for college and you're older than I think, or you were born there and you're like 21. But what do you think mm -hmm. if I didn't tell you? I feel like I should say 21. I'm going with 34. 34? Yeah. That's old. I'm not that old. I'm Look 30. At you. Now. I'm 35. I'm 30. Oh, I see. I was so off by four years. It's 34. scary to be 34. Why? That's a, that seems like really old to me. 30 seems really old. Do you hear this girl? 35. <laughs> You're gonna be 35 in five years. I don't it's coming. You can't stop it? What you gonna do? You can't walk away from 35. I can't Were you, were you scared away. of being 30 when you were 26? Yeah. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm like 30. Oh my gosh. But now you're 30. Is it a big deal now? I'm like, age really doesn't matter. And actually, the most difficult times in my life were in my 20s. Hmm. I really need to do something in my life. Because I'm 30 and I have, like, doing this... I know that it's something I'm going to be proud of the rest of my life. I haven't done anything that I'm extremely proud of. That I just, I'm like, shouting from the mountains out, I'm so proud of this thing. And I don't have that thing because I felt like I was kind of wasting my life. Time is just going by. It doesn't wait for anyone. Like, you can never make more time. You can make more money, but you can't. Like everyone, the, the time's gone once it's gone. What does growth look like for you then? You, you say wasting your life, wasting time. Like, Growing, what's a good use of time? What's a good use of life? You need to know 
what really fulfills you. What really fulfills you? Or is that what this is about? This is a, a large part of this is trying to find my purpose. That you know the work that I want to do. That knowing knowing what I was made to do. <laughs> I, I have ideas of it, but it's not really a complete picture. It's kind of like a blurry picture, and I know what I really enjoy, but I don't know if like, it's not your, your hobbies are not really going to be the thing you want to work. Do work on, I don't, right? I don't know about that. <laughs> I think it's harder, for sure. It, but it I think really you should depends. go with your hobbies, right? It, it depends. For person, what's person. your hobby? Okay, if you could do anything, regardless of money or success, you feel like right. happy. I, I have a fantasy, like in this, in my life. Hit me with it. This is what I'm waiting. I want to, I want to be in the mountains training martial arts. Yeah, <laughs> that's like why my, not? That's like a fantasy of mine. See, I started at Ocean Shores. Yeah. Yeah. So I walked 757 miles. Right. I'm gonna check. 757 miles as of yesterday mm -hmm. and then when I was in the desert there was like gravel dirt roads and and then there were like steep inclines and stuff and I was just like dragging my car I don't know how I survived because it was like a hundred or something yeah you're gonna be the next beef jerky we're gonna fucking do it. <laughs> it's just gonna be just dehydrated <laughs> dehydrated ying yeah mm, delicious all right that's why you had to get to the hot spring so we can like rehydrate you in the water. <laughs> that's, that's, Bring you back. That's the way. <laughs> but I, I went to Australia on like a kind of backpacking style trip, mm -hmm. but it wasn't it wasn't walking from place to place. Mm -hmm. I got ran over by a tractor. I, oh, they go so slow. No, on the fruit farm. Okay, this is what happened. I think I have this huge scar right here. Is, is that from the tractor? Yeah. No way. What the hell? Okay, it was on the fruit farm beaches, right. okay? The tractor, there's a tractor behind you and you dump your fruits in there. Mm -hmm. So I stepped in front of the tire because I thought he was parked. Mm -hmm. I stepped in front of the tire. But he kept going and my foot got caught in the tire. <laughs> and, and he couldn't see me because there were just branches everywhere and then ran over my leg. I was lucky it wasn't broken. I guess the ground was soft. Yeah. I, I, I'm just lucky. Yeah, the ground was super soft, so that should have helped. Mm -hmm. Do you have an imprint like in like the bugs? Yeah, my, cartoon? my, my just, like, like, <laughs> the smash mark. Is it, yeah, I left a big smash mark. <laughs> like, okay, so one, one thing on this trip, um, people are mostly good. Mm -hmm. Like. Don't believe what the media tells you. They only portray the negative, the worst side ever. But all the people I met, they were extremely kind. Mm. Like this happened more than once, okay? Someone unexpectedly just paid for my meal. <laughs> people donated, just strangers donated money to me. Uh, people let me stay in their yards. Um, no, uh, just random encounters, spontaneous encounters are the best. And this is one of the good things about not having everything planned. There are these spontaneous encounters. Mm -hmm. So I have never been like a people person, just always solitary and everything. But this trip has really shown me how to love others. And love is a decision. It's not just some random emotion. You, you have to decide. You have to decide to love someone. Like, not love them because you like them. Because like is different. Liking liking is like a gut reaction. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I, I like this person. I don't like this person. But love is like choosing to love others you don't like. Alright, so what's your, what's your thought for the road? Uh, what's your what's your big lesson you want my students to take home today? People are mostly good out there and always trust your gut. You need to trust your gut. If something feels off, just don't get involved, don't go into that situation. 
Like even working with people, you know? Yep. Like <laughs> trust your gut. That's the word of the day. When you yeah, trust okay. your gut. And yeah, just people are mostly good and don't live your life in fear. You got trail ruts cutting all the way down. Look at that. Then we pan all the way around. Now we're in dinosaur land. Look at that. That's rocks. That's rocks that were underwater. Look. This is when this was an ocean. Right here. We got ocean rocks. And then we keep turning. And out there in the distance, wind turbines. Wind turbines going across these power lines and coming all the way back around to the beginning of history. This is your heritage. And I know that that right now, especially, that is a scary word. That is not a word we want to hear a lot of because we got some poor associations with it right at the moment. But there is real joy to be had in this because this isn't a heritage that comes through in blood or marriage or anything like that. This is a cultural heritage. This is your land. Look at this. I hope I'm catching myself here, but you own this. This is your land. These are your plants. This is yours. Look at me. I'm out here walking like nobody. I paid nothing, and I'm gonna just walk. So one thing I've been wondering is with all these, whoo, there we go. All these dams, how are they keeping up with the fish? I mean, you've heard how many times I've said, am. here it is. I was just driving around and I found, whoo, there it is. Maybe it's backwards. The Hagerman Site Fish Hatchery. Now this place was built, now they're rebuilding it, but it was built, whoop, is that gonna be good? No, we're gonna switch side. We're gonna switch side, there we go. In 1952, and they grow 450,000 pounds of trout and salmon, and then they go and stock it in all the different rivers around here, so that way people have something to go fish and eat. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Can, uh, can I see some? Check it out. Look in there. Look at these monsters. This isn't a koi pond. This is dinner. Let's look over here. I like how they have this uh, chain link fence to keep me from uh, fishing. That, that's just food. Let's go down here a little bit further. So they're growing up these big old monsters. And then here's the crazy thing. You see those tanker trucks over there? Those tanker trucks are gonna be filled with fish. They're gonna pump the fish in from those tanks into those tanks and go drop them off in the river. And these guys are actually building a huge, huge new expansion of this whole thing. So who knows? Oh man, look at this monster. He does not even care that I'm right here. Can we even see him? Look, he's, he's just like a, a giant shark. Oh, there's an even bigger one! Holy crap, can you see the monster down there? Look at that thing! I'm gonna try to get it. You can see its shadow. Look how big it is just from its shadow. The fish right below me has gotta be three feet long, and the one swimming below him has gotta be almost six feet long. He's definitely taller than I am. I still have more hair than him, so I'm, I'm not threatened, but uh. Look, it's like Jurassic Park in this tank. The hell kind of giant fish is that? We gotta find a park ranger or somebody to come talk to us. I was hoping we could find some more big guys, but my gut feeling is that they probably don't have the big fish here. They probably just get them livable size and then go pump them into the rivers. I mean, that's what I would do, right? All right, let's go see. Let's go see if we can find ourselves a friend. Oh yeah, we got these interesting fish tanks here. Ooh, I wanna make this happen. All right, I'm gonna hold the camera still. You see all those little dots? Let's zoom in. Look how many fish. Look how many. There has got to be 
what? Just in my frame, a couple thousand. And then if we look back at that tank, harder to see, you got some stuff splashing there, but clearly like this one, just filled up. All right, so the adventure continues. Here's what I just found out from that really nice construction guy back there. Most of the people live on site. So all these houses behind me, these are people who work and live at the fish hatchery, which I guess makes sense. This is not an operation you can just shut down in the middle of the night. Man, it is huge. I've been walking for a little bit now and we're still whoop, seeing fish ponds. Pretty crazy. So he said they might be on break, they might be on lunch. I'm gonna wander around, talk loudly. We'll see if somebody shows up that we can talk to. And look at these things. These must be like the cages to trap them in. All right, so all the fish workers are gone, but I found Randy. Randy, what are those big fish? They're sturgeon. Sturgeon, that don't live in the ocean. No, they migrate up here and they uh, just eat bottom feed, like algae and what dead fish and stuff that just sits in the bottom of the river. So they're like pre-fish sticks. Pretty they're like the ocean's hot dog. Pretty much. <laughs> Do you know what the orange ones are? The orangey white ones? Those are gold trout. Got it. Not not fancy koi. No. Just delicious just dinner. Trout. Just golden trout. Awesome. All right. Thank you. We in business. This awesome trucker in front of us. There he is. Just saw me stuck and said, hey, follow me. Flip around. Go to this place and uh, they'll take care of you. So I think we're about to go see a fish hatchery. So we got the fish hatchery behind us. Look at that thing. It's huge. Then on this side, look at those glyphs. Isn't that crazy? But that's not the craziest thing. So I'm driving around and I'm like, what the, what the heck is this thing I see up ahead? It's like a tiny shrine. Uh, but I don't think much about it. Uh, but I hear water rushing. Let me get a better view. All that, all that, just hear water rushing. The name of this area is called Thousand Springs because a thousand spring wells squish out of the mountain. It's like this entire mountain is full of water and it's slowly being squeezed out from the pressure of the water above it. So guess what this little roadside thing is? It is fresh, squeezed, ancient spring water. I don't know how old it is. I don't know if it's fresh to taste, but you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna take a little sip. Because if it don't kill us, well, then we've just had something delicious. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. We got to go in for some more. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I'm all full on water from the hot springs. And that's got some magic, uh, magic healing properties to it. So I'm not gonna fill up here, but boy, that is some, that is some tasty mountain water. All right, next adventure. I couldn't not stop by here and see this. Like I thought, maybe I don't need to, maybe I don't need to film this. Maybe I don't need to film this. And then there was a clue that I shouldn't, and it said, wrong way. I don't think there's ever been a wrong way. So let's go find out. The right wrong way? I don't know. I don't know. Let's go see. I got something crazy over here. So this is what I wanted to show you. Ooh, giant, giant bridge. Going over one of the biggest uh, what are these called? Canyons in the country? In the world? I don't know. It's bananas. Let's go take a look. Should we hold the phone over the gorge? I think we should. Let's do it. Look down there. Those are kayakers. That's how high up we are. Man, we're way high up here. What the hell? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. That down there. That's a boat. 
So, from what I hear, they actually have bungee jumping. Like, this is one of the few legal places you can do bungee jumping and some other craziness. I don't remember what. Oh, base jumping, where you have like a parachute. Oh, we're going under the highway. Just nothing. Push it up. And uh, Alright, one more short clip. Just for comparison. You see that? That's a Best Buy. That's like a, there's a Ross and a Best Buy and a pancake house. Look how small that is compared to all this. Look at this craziness. And then you look at this bridge and you're like, nope, 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 we leaving. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Man, it's been a day. I woke up uh, at a hot springs called Miracle Hot Springs where there's an alligator in the hot springs. I just drove along the original Oregon Trail, including its trail ruts, talked to this girl for like an hour wait, who's wait, walking across wait. the country. Huh. Wait. Huh. You went all the way across the country to go to the Oregon Trail? <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you? Look, I went to Tokyo to go to This is a pattern. <laughs> How about I just uh, do a backwards K-turn onto the highway? Okay, sure, absolutely. If you could have both of your hands in the air at the same time, then that would make it a win. Would you like it if I waved them like I just don't care? No. It's so big, everybody who works there also lives there. Wait, 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 wait. wait. How big is it? <laughs> Yeah. All right, my friends. We're in a little bit of a, a harder place right now. This is Minidoka. Minidoka is a site of huge embarrassment for the country. And I can't believe we're doing the same kinds of things at the border again. This is the site one of the Japanese internment camps. So, during World War II, if you were of Japanese descent, they sent you to a place like this. And I think now, oh, it's so crazy. How could they send people, American citizens who happen to be Japanese, to this place of nowhere? So I'm gonna take myself out of this video and just let, just let you hear and see what it's like out here. There was a woman named Hana Matsushita. Hana Matsushita. And she was imprisoned here. They call them internees or detainees, but they were imprisoned. And she's writing her husband, and she says, Last night I walked to the riverbank. The clouds reflected in the water were beautiful, and the sagebrush on the plain was red with the sun. I cried and prayed to God while gazing at the setting sun. She said that about right here. This place, they pulled her away from her life to make this her home. No home has a guard tower. Let me take a look here. This is our view, where we're at right now. Look, we are here. Here's the water. There it is. It might seem weird. We're, we're in the middle of uh, Idaho. But look where they were taking these people from. Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. These were your neighbors. So I found this big building. It's the root cellar. So they would have to grow all their own food out here as much as they could. 
and then store it underground to keep it safe from the weather because we're out in this high desert. Look at all these people. This was their home. This is where they worked. That whole earth berm right there. And underneath it, the lifeblood of this place. Look, you can still... This isn't ancient. Look at that. I'm going to zoom in. There's still cloth on the doors. This wasn't... This wasn't a hundred years ago. And I guess we're getting closer, but still. Guess the way I think about this, and the reason it hits especially hard, is that if my grandpa was Japanese, my grandpa who I'm going to go visit, who's still alive today, if he was Japanese, this is where they would have taken him to. That building down there, which I'm guessing is the barracks, would have been his home. This isn't ancient Roman history. This is my grandpa. This is the person who bought me my first computer. Would have been put on a train and taken here. This is your grandpa. There's home. You've been on a train since you left Oregon, since you left Washington. And now, this is home. Imelda Kinoshita said, The train stopped right in the midst of sagebrush and dust. It was a desolate looking place, and down in the bottom of my heart, I started feeling homesick for the green trees and Puget Sound. I could feel the struggle inside of me to keep tears from coming up. They left their homes in our backyards to come here. There was no sewage lines. There was no indoor plumbing. There was no insulation. There was diarrhea and food poisoning for months and months and months. There were dust storms. There was bitter, bitter cold in the winter. So cold that when we go look at that building, they had to stuff the cracks with fabric. So cold that they burned whatever they could until coal for their coal stoves got here in December. December! When you get chilly this October, I want you to think about that. It was almost Christmas before they had any way to heat their home. Only military cots and blankets were furnished. Floors were bare, walls were unpainted. A single light bulb from the ceiling. But even so, the elder said, Shikata ga nai, which is, there's nothing we can do about it, so we make the best of it. I want to think about that more. Shikata ga nai. Shikata ga nai. Shikata ga nai. There was nothing we can do about it, so we'll make the best of it. I think sometimes there is something we can do about it, but in these conditions, we have to remember, Shikata ga nai. There's nothing we can do about it, so we'll make the best of it. But I want to see. That's, that's the inside. Oh, let's see if we can get it. That's it. Those are the floors. You can see the prairie refre reflected in the glass, in the sky. But that's it. That's home. There's some props to keep it up, right? A little bit better. But that's your view. Again, it just blows my mind how big it is. So for scale, we're here. Here's the baseball field. Look at the size of this map. Look at all the residential blocks. I thought there were a dozen. Look at all of them. All of them. 
That's just the hospital area. That's just the warehouses. Look how many houses. It's insane. It's insane. This is the automotive repair yard. So there'd be cars here. Again, we think that this is so long ago. Look, look what's right here in this ghost town. That's a fuel tank. That's a buckets for, who knows, paint, oil? Let's see if we can find out. Not sure, maybe oil. There's the bolt somebody turned to make this building happen. There's the gas tank that drove them here. Somebody had to tighten this bolt. Somebody had to put this in the concrete. And those people had to know what this was being built for. And that was the internment and imprisonment of American citizens based on their looks and their heritage. Somebody had to tighten that bolt. Right, we're in Lava Springs. All right, your boy splurged a little bit to get himself an actual hotel room. Feeling pretty beat, but there's something here besides a TV that I think is gonna make, besides a microwave, that I think is gonna make me feel a bit better. How about a jetted hot tub filled with mineral water? Ooh, I'm gonna eat some pizza. That's what's that's what's happening next. I'm gonna get some pizza and come back. I'm taking a long soak in a mineral tub. Alright y'all, getting some pizza. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Brandon. I'm Demetrio. So, nice. That's right. We're just like we all need some pizza. We're gonna eat some pizza, we're gonna go have some fun, and that's it. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go hang with my friends in this crazy hot springs lounge. I'm gonna go find out how it is, make some new acquaintances, have some new adventures. See you tomorrow.